and to greatly restrict the use of no-knock warrants and has a host of provisions to incentivize those and other reforms at the state and local level. And so uh, I just want to say very clearly that the president has said himself, Brianna Taylor's death was a tragedy, a blow to her family, her community, and also to America more broadly. And the president uh, continues to call for the George Floyd justice. And policing act to, to be sent to his desk that he will sign. The president also understands that black women experience a disproportionate share of violence. in this country, and he will continue to fight for legislation that advances police reform and making sure that we keep, uh, that, uh, that we keep uh, black communities safe. And so that is going to be his commitment as, as uh, we continue into his administration. Okay, Mayor. A question on the economy. Um, the Fed is forecasting, of course, that unemployment may have to go up before they reach their goal. Just wondering if the White House shares the view that unemployment might need to rise in order to keep inflation down. So look, um, again, when it comes to the Fed, it is independent. The President believes in its independence. And so he believes in giving the Fed uh, the space needed to, to make decisions uh, on monetary policy. Uh, as it relates um, to unemployment, uh, and I, I've heard, we've heard the comments that have been made in Congress. Look, when we look at the recent economic indicators and we look at the, da the, the data, It is not consistent with a recession or even a precursory period. And the, and the reason why, as you see, unemployment is, the, is at the lowest in 50 years, and that's a record low. Uh, more than 500,000 jobs were created last month, representing a very strong labor market. GDP grew by 2.9 percent just last quarter. And real wages are higher than they were. seven months ago. So we believe that households are indeed uh, very strong in a strong position and household net is above the pre-pandemic levels and measures of financial distress.
are below are below the pre-pandemic uh, levels as well. And so the data, in, the indicators, those economic indicators that I just laid out shows us uh, that, again, we're in a strong position. Uh, as we move forward. But how concerned are you that if unemployment does go up, that it may hinder that very economic message? Because unemployment is, as you just did, is often you know, a bright point that the president points to. But I think the reasons I laid out the economic indicators, they sh they're showing us that uh, because of the president's, the, because of the president's economic plan, we, sh we see that his plan is working and I think that's important to point out too we understand that there is concerns uh, we always say there's always more work to do obviously uh, but our economy I just believe that what the president has put forth as a plan uh, to make sure that we're building an economy from the bottom up middle out is indeed working and we see that in the data when you look at the unemployment record low uh, when you look at uh, wages going up and that is occurring because of the work that we have done now uh, is there more work to do of course but again those indicators give us confidence Just a quick logistical question this is the second day in a row where the president hasn't had any public events on his schedule what's he up to and is there a strategy <laughs> to having what's President up to before this speech tomorrow. <laughs> So look, um, yesterday, as I think we read out two uh, heads of state calls that he had uh, with, um, uh, I believe, with the Oman uh, and also with uh, President Macron. Uh, we read those two calls out, and so the president is always working, always making sure that he he not even always making sure he does have. The American people at the top of mind every day. Uh, he is uh, uh, constantly meeting with his senior staff, uh, and uh, you will see him tomorrow for the big day uh, as we. Uh, roll out the president's budget. Okay. Uh, Corrine, thank you. Uh, could you confirm um, uh, our reporting that um, President Biden is going to host the on the AUKUS, uh, and um, uh, as soon as we have more information, surely we will we'll share that. And as you know, every Friday we lay out the President's week ahead. I just don't have anything to, to preview at this time or to okay. announce. Okay. And then I just wanted to see if there's a reaction to uh, <coughs> Senator Manchin saying he's going to vote against your uh, nominee to lead the IRS. So let me first say that uh, our relationship, uh, uh, the President has a long-standing relationship with, with Senator Manchin that goes back uh, years, uh, certainly over a decade, and uh, we respect our relationship with him. We have done, a, we have been able to deliver for the American people historic, uh, really consequential pieces of legislation, and so we appreciate uh, the the closeness and and how we've worked uh, well with um, with Senator Manchin as it relates uh, to our nominee, uh, Danny Werfel, is a public and private uh, sector leader who has. Uh, served under both Democratic and Republican administrations. Of course, more than uh, 15 years of government
government service. Uh, he has, uh, he served President Barack Obama, as some of you know, and President George W. Bush to lead some of our most uh, complex management challenges. of the IRS Acting Commissioner in Office of Management and Controller at the OMB. As you, as I just laid out, he's worked for both a, a Democrat and, and a Republican, so has had that bipartisan experience as well. He's well qualified for this position. He uh, was reported from, uh, from finance with bipartisan support, and we urge the Senate to Firm him to this important role at an incredibly crucial time. Again, but we we appreciate our relationship with Senator Manchin, which has been fruitful, especially as we speak to deliver. for the American people. And just finally, I saw that you had a comment out this morning about um, some uh, broadcasting on, on the Tucker Carlson program on Fox. And I was just curious if you had any broader comment about the ongoing uh, lawsuit uh, between Dominion Voting Systems and Fox News, which has turned up evidence that, that there may have been falsehoods in, in the reporting that they did around the election, um, which of Fox, I should say, has, has said that those are cherry-picked anecdotes. So, but do you have a reaction to that? Yeah, I do have a reaction. Look, we agree with the, the chief of uh, Capitol Police. And, and the right rage of bipartisan lawmakers. You heard them all yesterday. You guys reported on it, who have condemned uh, this false de depiction of the unprecedented violent attack on, con on our Constitution and the rule of law, which cost police, police uh, <laughs> officers their lives. And that's what we saw on that day, on a very dark day, an attack on our democracy. And so we also, uh, when as it relates to the Tucker Carlson question, we agree with uh, Fox Nation's own attorneys and executives who have repeatedly stressed in multiple courts of law that Tucker Carlson is not credible when it comes to this issue in particular. And we have, uh, you know, PR back in um, uh, back in September of 2020, they had the following. You literally can't believe the facts Tucker Carlson tells you. So so. 